Hey guys, welcome to the show. I'm glad to be here after a, what, a 15 day, something like that. I can't remember now. It's been a while. I'm having a rush here, guys, to set this stuff up. Uh, time was running down on me. I was tied up on the phone, but uh, good to see you guys here. Appreciate you dropping by. And uh, got Andy here. What's up, Andy? How you doing? Oh, well, another one I have to watch as I repeat. Have a great live stream. Yeah, I'm not going to run it probably an uh, hour to hour and a half. Two. I'm not going to run a long one. It gets too hard on anybody to even want to rewatch them. Uh, Jer Bear Tactical's here. Good to see you, Jer Bear. It's showtime. Yeah, I was a few seconds late trying to get this set up. I'm going to, I was going to do a, um, or I'm going to do, I'm going to set the die up on the Forester, a reading die with the uh, Forester uh, lock ring. And I'm going to show you kind of how I use the instant indicator to set the die up. And I've also got a lot of brass here I've done uh, already sized. And actually some of it's loaded, some of it's not, some of it still needs the powder and the uh, uh, bullet and then the crimping. Uh, the, I'll let you kind of give you a lowdown on what's going on. I don't want to set the uh, factory crimp die up on the Forester. It's just too much trouble. So I'm going to leave it right there on the T7 is what I'm going to do. So I'll do the crimping there because it's convenient. But I will set up the uh, Forester with the uh, micro seating die. And uh, these are good dies, too. And uh, I'll kind of explain how I do that. And uh, I'll size a few and show you how I get it in the uh, exactly where I want the head to bump to be at. A shoulder bump, excuse me. But uh, anyway, hope you all had a good week. It's good seeing you. It has been a while. Oh, we got Pennsylvania Reloader here. Good to see you, Pennsylvania Reloader. Bending Ballistics with us. Good to see you. Reloader 762. Good to see you, Reloader 762. I usually just call him Reloader. Uh, th thanks a lot, guys, for dropping by. Um, anyway, let's... Uh, let me cut the light on here and get the camera off my ugly mug and try to try to get this mic up out of the way, guys. So it's going to be a little weird on weird here. I need a shotgun mic actually for doing this. Um, I tell you what, I'm not. I, I don't really need the cam over here, so you can see this. What I'm going to do is go ahead and set this up. But I am going to need my glasses, and I didn't bring them. I think I can do it without my glasses. I'm going to first set up the cedar die, which is the micro cedar die. Hey, Walter, how you doing? Hey, Hasbro. Good to see you guys. I'm going to go ahead and set, th set this up. I usually get this here to collapse about halfway on the Forester. Actually, most all the pressers I use. I turn it to where the dial is towards me, and I put it on zero. I use a little tiny screwdriver. What I'm going to do, I hope you can, I know you're not exactly seeing this, but I'll try to explain it as I go. Uh, actually, hang on. Let me put the, let me see if I can put this other camera on here. Hang on, guys. Probably be better. Hang on. I don't want to make you all dizzy so hold on a second Sorry about that, guys. The camera wouldn't work. I need to reboot my computer, and I'm not going to do that. 
So we'll just move. I should have checked this earlier, but like I say, I was tied up. So we're just going to move this out of the way. It was working a few minutes ago. That's strange. As I thought it was. We'll just uh, go with what we got here. Now what I'm going to do is put this calibration, you know, your little dial, uh, your little hash marks facing towards me. I'm going to zero it. I'm going to take my dummy round right here, which is set at two. Uh, oh, gosh, I can't even remember now. Let me see. What is it set at? I should remember that. I got it written down here somewhere. 2.200 is the seating depth I'm looking for. So I got my dummy round set de almost really dead on. So let's get it going up. I'm going to back out this center thing just in case so I don't seat my <laughs> dummy round here. Like I said, no glasses. It's not going to be as easy. So I'm going to back it out some. Okay. Make sure. Oh, perfect. Okay. I'm going to take the center seating stem and I'm going to turn it down until I feel it touch. The uh, bullet oh jive or the bullet. There we go. I just, I don't force it. I just turn it until I just barely feel it touch. Tighten that little nut. All right, that's it. Now let's do a dummy round just to... Well, actually, I'm not going to do a dummy round. I'm going to do one with powder. We're going to go ahead and load this now with a powder, which is... I can't turn my camera on. I apologize for that. Without having to reboot. Or either come back... Probably come back into the stream. I might could leave it and it might show up on the... Oh, there it is. Wow. Wouldn't work a few minutes ago. Anyway, here we go. You all can't hear me back here because the type of mic I have. Hey, JH. Good to see you. Uh, so I'm just going to turn around. I'm trying to get 23.1 or 23.3 grains right in there somewhere. I think I actually lowered it a little bit, uh, a little bit ago. So... Let me do a few of these and get the powder and see what I got, what I'm throwing here. Be right back. I am. Let me explain this. My powder hopper, which is a 3BR, does not have a mount. So if I put it on the custom mount, well, I wouldn't call it custom, but custom made out of wood, if you know what I mean. And it vibrates and I can't get really that good of throws with it. I need the uh, actual uh, uh, Redding uh, hi uh, high-rise mount for it. And I'll get that later. So I'm actually throwing powder on the 650. I'm seating, sizing and seating the bullet on the uh, Forster press. I'm going over to the Redding and I'm going to crimp it and the round is completed. So hang on a minute. Hey, Chris, how you doing? Let me see what I got over here. Perfect. 23.3. 20, that's what I'm throwing. Uh, which is slightly over uh, the uh, Hornady book. It calls for max is 23.2. But I also know I can go 23.3. But disclaimer, do not try and do my recipe. Not at all. Use multiple books to get your data. Let me get this out. Okay, here we... Let me turn the camera around, guys. Sorry. That's the problem working with two cams. Back again. Okay. Now let me dump the powder. Powder's dumped. 
And uh, when I get through with this, um, we'll bring a panel on. Uh, hopefully, Matt can join us if he's here, if he's got time. Uh, any of you guys want to come on the panel, you're welcome to. I've got that done. All right, we're going to get the bullet. Now, we're still sitting up this die now, remember. It's not... Uh, Seating uh, depth is not finalized yet, so uh, let me get my uh, calipers. I use eye gauging. They use the big battery, and the battery never goes dead. How do I know that? Because I leave the battery on overnight sometimes, and it still don't go dead. So got that out. where it's sitting at. Hope you guys are doing good. Hope you've had a good week. We're sitting at 2.219. So we're 19,000 off our target. 19 thousandths of an inch. I'm not going to go down 19,000. I'm going to go down less. Hang on. Let me tighten this. Uh, go ahead and tighten this locker ring up. Turn it. Even though it's 19,000, I'm going to go ahead and turn it 10 thousandths of an inch down more. Probably won't even hardly go down. Nope. I should have did that. Hold on a second. Let me make sure this thing is set up. Sure, that shaft is uh, turned all the way down to the bullet. There we go. It's probably still seeing the same. Well, believe this, I got this at, <laughs> I got lucky on that. I didn't, I just adjusted the center rod and just got dead on 2.200, 2.200 thousandths of an inch, 0.5. That's close enough for me. I'd rather be a half a thou over than a, a thou or several thousand under. So, usually I have to do the center shaft, guys, and then I, Turn the dial, you know, three thousandths, four thousandths, five thousandths additional turns by the whatever the number is, and then I finish seating it. And, but I got lucky this time. So anyway, that's good. Come over here. Actually, I can even check headspace too on this thing right now too. Headspace is about a half a thou over on this brass. And now I'm going to crimp it. And there is a completed round. Just like my others. Who else has jumped in here? James Pollard. Good to see you, James. Trying to get the cables out of my way. Hang on there. So one good round. So the seating die is set up. It's ready. So good thing about that, it's tight. All I do if I want to seat anymore is just throw it in there and I'm done that's sorry about that that's why I like that the, I like the Forester because it's it's just easy to take a die out throw a die in so now just for the sake of the show I'm gonna uh <coughs> excuse me guys I've been on antibiotics the past few days so I'm gonna set the uh sizing die up for you guys get it in here and show you how I do it with the 
using the instant indicator by Reddick. Now, I could use a case gauge or I could use the Hornady system. Uh, I typically bump for the chamber, not for the round, but I'm doing these somewhere between the zero Sammy to one to two thousandths over Sammy men. So, at least I've got this instant indicator. I can always know where my headspace is if I want to check it when I'm sitting up uh, another press. And I use it quite often, too. Let me see. Here is the brass. We'll check and see where the headspace is. It's about six thousandths over Sammy Min. This one is. All right, we're going to get the. Uh, I use Imperial. Hey, Critter. One little Indian. It was 90% down this way. Okay. Sorry, I can't talk to the chat as much as I would like over there or address you. I'll have to do that once I get through with this. Uh, we're going to... Actually, let me check something. If I'm going to size this, I'm going to go ahead and put powder in it. Okay, the crimp is gone. The military crimp's been uh, swaged out. Uh, actually, drilled out with a reamer. So, I need to put in a uh, primer. Let me get the primers here. That'll give me a minute to say hello to you guys. What's going on with you guys lately? Hey, MCK. Thanks for dropping by. Let me get a few primers out here. And I do not like priming on the press, but that's all I got right now. So outside of that in the 650, which actually primes better. <laughs> so come over here. Primed. Matter of fact, let me check the trim length. I might have to pull the trimmer out. Mm, 1.747. Now, I, I trim typically 1.4. Let's see. 1. Point, ah, well, hang on, guys. Losing my mind here. Typically 1.7440, but I will go one or two thousandths over sometimes. And if I got brass that's up near 50 or 50 above, I'll keep it at. 1.750. So hang on, let me get my trimmer out and I'm going to go ahead and trim this back right quick. I just noticed something. I'm not monitoring my sound, so I can't even hear myself talk except through these. I have no one on the panel, so I can't hear them anyway. There we go. Now I can hear. Him. For some reason, that. Hang on, guys. I think I got an audio issue. That's strange. I don't understand that. Test. For some reason I'm getting not getting audio back through my loop. Huh. Oh well if I pull some out on the panel, I won't even be able to hear them tonight. Hold on guys, let me check this. Sorry about this. Something is not right here. I gotta look at my audio settings. Let's see. Audio. Audio's working. Fault speakers. That's right. Huh. I wonder if my wire went bad. My cable. Still can't hear myself. Oh, well. Looks like I can't have a panel tonight. Something has happened to my sound. That don't make sense. Hold on, guys. I apologize. I don't quite understand this. It's either a yard stream, stream yard or my system. So hang on.
Hang on, guys. I'm back. I apologize for the... Some reason it's... Go figure. Electronics. Electronics is all I can say. There we go. Okay. Now here we are back sitting, setting up the uh, sizing die. So, where's that brass? Let me check it again. What did I do with it? Here it is. I am using the uh, the Ellie Wilson. Sinclair version. Difference is that you get the top and you get this little, like a little uh, hockey puck, and then you get little things drilled in the back of it. And it's already set up, so just uh, cut this. And that's it. that aside now we're going to set the sizing die up I can feel it I can usually feel two two three five five six I can tell when it hits the shoulder just by the uh, pressure of it I didn't push the shoulder back at all so, I know Nope. Now, that's not usually talked about in our community, but you can, if you used to your press, sometimes you can feel that shoulder when that shoulder gets moved back by that die. Now, granted, can you tell once it hits the shoulder? No. But before it hits the shoulder, you can feel it. So I got to go down a little further. Nope. Now, there's no point in checking this because I can feel it's not hitting the uh, shoulder at all. Nope. Not yet. I know this may be slightly different what you see on YouTube, what I'm doing, but believe me, I know when it hits the shoulder. <laughs> Check to make sure. Same thing, six thousandths over. Nope. Not yet. Starting to slowly get closer to it. But still no shoulder contact yet. Put a little more lube on it. It's probably okay, but just to be safe. I'm going to turn it down a little more. Nope. We're starting to get close. There it is. Contact. I know, it's strange, but yes, I can feel when it hits the shoulder. <laughs> yep, took it back maybe a thou. Turn it down a little bit more. Hey, Dred, good to see you, man. Nope, sure didn't. As I'm turning, I can tell it has not hit the shoulder. I don't know all presses, but the, my Forester, I can tell. It's not hitting the uh, shoulder at all. Yep. One thou over. I can, t I can leave that alone. That would be basically shoulder bump. This would fire in an AR-15 with one thou over. I don't really want to go to Sammy Men because then you're really oversizing the brass. So we'll call that contact. We'll call that good. Close enough, as they say, in reloading. Now, you all seen me turn that over and over and over and over. So 
once they hit that shell, I could feel it when it hit the body, and I could also feel it as soon as it made contact with that uh, shoulder. So it is set now. And uh, this is sized. All I got to do is uh, chamfer, deburr, and put the powder in. Hang on. Let me, I do it over here on a little machine. That's it. Now we're going to take it over here to the 650 and dump the powder. I know this is kind of strange. I just don't have no way, other way of dumping it. Let me see. Let me see if I can switch cams again so you all can at least see this. Boom. There we go. Be right back. Here it goes. We got 23.2, 10 thousandths under. That's fine. That's close enough, as they say. So let me change cameras. You know what? I think I'll get down the road. I think I'll get one of those splitters, HDMI splitters. That way we can just push buttons and I won't have to even get up. I can just sit here and... Actually, with an HDMI splitter, I can have the camera, like three cameras in this one window right here. That way I don't have to get up and down. I just go over there and you still see me. Uh, we got our powder in it. Now we're going to set the bullet. We're going to take this die out. This is ready. I can put this in anytime I want. And it'll size the brass correctly. Going to put that in. Going to get our cedar. Forster cedar. These are still a good deal. And, uh. We're going to set, set the bullet. Let's uh, measure it and check. Make sure it's the right length. Make sure my calipers are zeroed out. Yep. Two thousandths over. Still close enough. I can take it and turn it. Right there, and it should be fine. You got to remember these bullets aren't match grade bullets, too. They're uh, varmint bullets. Dead on 2.200, 1.99. Yeah, close enough. And then we're going to come over here and we're going to crimp it on the factory, Lee Factory crimp dial. And there we are. Another round. So that's two rounds, and I'm going to take a minute to talk with you guys. Well, I'll use that as a dummy. <laughs> it's set right. Hang on. That's good enough. Oh, well. Kind of hard not to make mistakes when you're on here trying to keep up the side chat and talk to. <laughs> Oh, James Potter, bring lots of ammo and shoot all weekend. Yep, sounds good. Turn this goofy light off. Too bright on me. Hasbro, hey, R, what die is that you're using on your turret press? I'm using, on my turret, I'm using a, a factory Lee crimp die for 223. Uh, the dial is a uh, Reading Instant Indicator. It uh, uh, measures your Sammy head space on your shoulder bump. It's a little kit you buy. It's a good set. I highly recommend it, but it is way high. When I bought it, it was cheap, but it's not cheap anymore compared to what I once paid paid for. I think I paid a hundred, I think one hundred fifty nine or sixty nine bucks on sale. I think that thing's. Eric Walter might know. It's it's fairly high now. I wouldn't doubt it. It's near two hundred. Critter just spent three hundred for food. <laughs> Let's see. Jamie, J8 says, sounds like a plan. I'll be hunting some primers. Send me some, Jamie. I need some. My LGS and Varget on the shelf. 
local gun shop had bar- oh wow 20 pounds of it man i wish you were what gun shop is that uh, james do they have an online website i'll go in there and order i'd like to have some bargain if it's reasonable of course there is no reasonable these days uh critter, uh, critter you've got to stay away from that taco bell I like that tread. I like that Godfather. I got it in DVD and uh, watch it sometime in the instant streaming. I'd like to get it in Blu-ray. Critter Walter. Bunning beans and rice is getting old. Oh, wow, Critter. You need to eat some good steak. Of course, now it's one steak, 25 bucks a pe- uh, for two of them. At least here in where I'm at. Yeah, it was the dial. I was wondering about. Haven't tried that yet. Yeah, Hasbro, that's the uh, Reading Instant Indicator. It comes with a shoulder bump gauge. Um, uh, you can measure uh, brass length, and you can also measure ogive to base your uh, overall length, too, of your round from the ogive to the base. So it, it's a good it's a good unit, and it works. And like I said, you didn't, I didn't use a bump gauge. I didn't use a – not a bump gauge, but I didn't use a uh, Hornady. I didn't use a case gauge, which I've got right here. I got uh, – Where's it at? I got it in my bag here, the uh, L.E. Wilson. And I also have a Dillon, but I use the L.E. Wilson. And uh, I do like Elster does. I put a piece of cardboard in there, and he's right, it works. And spray WD-40 in it, and I have never had rust the past several years. And occasionally I replenish a little bit of spray on the cardboard. Put a cor- put your little uh, corrugated box in a baggie, freezer bag. Wipe your thing down, stick it in there, and you never have to worry about rust. So... I got that idea from him, so I'll give him the credit. He did it. That's where I learned it from. Uh, but, yeah, it's a good gauge, man. I mean, it's when I look back, sometimes I wish I hadn't have bought it, but I, I tell you what it will do for new reloaders. It will learn a new reloader more about he- headspace. It gets them really used to it quick. Uh, Chuck's Pawn and Gun had it. AR Guns, what, 51 a pound? I'd pay that. Yeah. I hate to, but I would, I'd like to have about two pounds of it. Appreciate you telling us, uh, Jamie, although part three is not equal. Let me put that up there, guys. Hey, I can still load and talk to you guys. I wonder where, uh, I wonder, Mac, Mac must be busy tonight. <clears throat> Let's see if he's can come on eventually here. Hang on, let me see if it won't send him a link. Be right back, guys. Send him a thing, see if he wants a link. Usually he does. Usually he texts me first on it. See if I get a response. Uh, who all we got here? Let me go down this thing, call you out. Round four by four is here. Good to see you, Round. Walter Bunning, Vanessa, Shred, Chase586, Walter Bunning, Critters with us, Bending Ballistics, Pennsylvania Reloader. Vanessa Kitty. Hey, Vanessa. Good to see you. Good to see you too, uh, Fred. I think it's been a while. James Pollard is with us. Oh, got a text. Oh, okay. He wants a link. Good. Uh, Hang on, guys. Let me send him a link. Link coming, uh, Mac. There we go. It's a strange me being by myself doing doing a show. It's it's totally different. And uh, I was actually going to bring the the panel in a little later, but hey, I miss you guys. Want to talk to you? So what can I say? It's good to see you. 
you got to realize I haven't did a show in, what, three weeks now? Seems like. Probably has been that long. But everything is good. I actually like the time slot. It's uh, easier on some of the guys out west. And uh, let's see. Hasbro. Let me finish what I was doing. West Covina Dodge. Good to see you, wet, wet, uh, Pat. Georgia Trapping. Hey, good to see you. Another Georgia guy here. Let's see. Thanks, Jamie. But that's something I got to talk to you about. Eventually, trapping is some of these tra uh, traps. I, I I know they got numbers. Some of them, I think they got numbers. It's been a while since I looked at them, and I want to get with you and be with just a second. Let's see, Mark. Mark Thomas is with us. Good to see you, Mark. MCK. Uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, Idaho Rogers jumped in. Good to see you, Idaho. Bending ballistics. Jerry Bear. Hey, Mike. How you doing, man? How you doing? Good, Don't, man. I just got home from work. Good timing, isn't it? Nine o'clock. <laughs> Better for you though, isn't it? Yeah, I just had to drive my. I had to bring my uh, moat and um, my trailer home and going camping over the weekend, so um, it delayed me a little bit. Oh, you going camping? Yeah, gonna go out on the side by side. Do a bit of. Go away for the weekend and chill out. Oh, I wish I had me a camper. I've been thinking about buying a used one. Yeah, it's and, so much fun. Uh, I thought I seen Chris here earlier. I think I did. I think he rolled off. Go up there and look. I swear I did. There he is. Chris from the 740. You want a link, Chris? If you do, let me know. Drop it in the... I'll send it out to you. Oh, I was just showing a little bit how to set up on that Forrester press. I started doing it on T7. I said, oh, I don't really want to do the competition shell holders tonight. And I ran late on the phone, too. Uh, tied up. Let me see. That's the dummy one. I got to get rid of that. That goes in the pool be pulled <laughs> i gotta whack a, a bullet out yeah, i'm just uh, switching my computer on so i'm on my ipad at the moment so i can't see the live chat so i'm just switching my computer on and i'll swap over to that once it's all up and running okay <clears throat> you're not in your truck are you no i'm back in my oh, loading okay yeah, i seen your mac toes figure you might still be. i i just walked in the door i've literally walked two minutes ago so i just haven't changed i just came straight and jumped on here Let's see, Walter. Uh, James Pollard says, I paid 51 a pound for Varga and 41 a, for a pound of SCFE223. I wish I could get some uh, small rifle primers, but everybody's still wanting that stuff. It's funny, down here in Georgia, I can't find them high or low. People like Chris up there in Ohio and areas are able to get, what, 300, I think, at a time, you know, a little 100 packs. And uh, I know our academy used to do 100 packs only, that's all they did. Jenny, 1911's with us. Hey, Jenny. Walter Critter. Good to see you. Thanks for dropping by. Let's see, yeah, Ram, who I, I was paying um, $110 for a box of um, 1,000 large pistol primers. I managed to get all the three boxes over the last two weeks. So 110 out the door. It's, a bit, it's not too bad, I suppose. But they are match grade. They are actually gold medal match grade primers. So Yeah, that's not too bad. And I was paying forty a pound for unique. I managed to get three pound a unique as well. So I bought. They were forty dollars a pound. That wasn't too bad. Mm -hmm. I think the last time I bought unique, I think it was twenty five dollars or twenty eight dollars. I can't remember. But it's been a long time. Uh, who else? Is there? <clears throat> Walker says. What's Walker saying? Uh, reloading. That sounds great. I've been on the bike the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I watched one of your videos. You mentioned your bike out riding. Uncle John is with us. Good to see you, Uncle John. Yeah, I, yeah, I would pay it, uh, James, what you paid. Uh, I begin to think that really it's going to be a long time for primers and powder to go down. I bet we'll still be playing probably two or three years from now, powder the same price, to be honest. That's just my prediction. Could be wrong. But, uh, I don't think it's going to go down much. I think primer mm -hmm. might go down to about $75, $80 a box, but I think that's going to be the new norm. Mm -hmm. And that's ridiculous. I paid uh, 
$1,035 here in Georgia for it. Let's see, Hasbro says something to me. Hey, AR, if you can't find small rifle rounds by July, let me know. I'll be coming back to Georgia and can probably. Oh, okay, Hasbro. I'll pay for them, man. I don't want nothing free. Let's see if you got any extra. I'll definitely buy some from you. Bending Ballistic says, I quit using the Federal Gold Match primers. Hey, in this day, hey, you use what you can get. <laughs> but uh, I'll take any brand right now uh, at this point. But uh, Anyway, you know, I was talking earlier, Mike, about, I was wanting to see if you, can you tell this? On this press, I know you probably don't have this one. I don't, I don't know. You got a lot of them. <laughs> but uh, I can actually feel as soon as I make contact with the shoulder of the brass. Yeah, you can normally do it on most presses. Once you, once, once you start to know your press, you, just, you, you get the mm -hmm. feet as the pressure comes on. That's some, I think a lot of us don't talk about that, you know, especially for new people. But you can definitely, you, you'll start to feel it, the contact. And uh, especially with this, it's just it's smooth as silk, this thing is. That looks a nice fit. press. Pardon? It looks a nice press, that one does. I've enjoyed it. I, I love this because I can just go boom. Take that, you know, di uh, take the uh, the die out and set it down and then go back to sizing. I mean, you can't really beat it for some things. I do want to get rid of this handle here and put the ball on it, though. I don't like that. Well, now you can see it. Yeah, I don't like those straight handles. Hang on, I forgot something. Bear with me, guys. Be right back. Just one split yeah. second. Before you go, uh, I'll yeah. just let me in on the other. I, I mean, oh, yeah, I'm on the screen. Okay. Computer screen. There you go. Got you. Hang, hang on, I'm going to go dark, dark just for one second. I, I got you. There we go. <laughs> I forgot to pull my shade down behind me <laughs> so, before the show. I had a late start. I was on the phone and bar barely, barely made it and still was a few minutes late here. And uh, I do a lot of this stuff I've learned too from, uh, you know, like you say, you, you learn a lot from these guys. I learned, uh, like, I do magnets from Harbor Freight like Walter. I got that from Walter Bunning. I keep all my Allen rent keys, wrenches on them. Yeah, I, I need to go and pick some up and put some on my presses. That's one thing I haven't got. And I use them also for my shell holders because I don't have a holder. So I just stick them on the side of my uh, stand and uh, leave them there. And they never get knocked off. So, <clears throat> excuse me. MCK, what's up, brother? Yeah, got a few on here. I guess Chris ain't there. I actually want a link in here tonight. Got Rebel with us. 67 Rebel SSTAMC. Thanks for dropping by. Mark Thomas, he's always with us. You know, it seems like it's been a long time since I've streamed outside of, you know, the coffee. I got a bunch of stuff here i'm working on guys that you, but you can see i'll show it to you here yeah we haven't seen you streaming in the evening for a while have we yeah yeah i kind of sat back and waited it's a new name that i haven't seen before just jumped on pat in a bunker uh, pat, yeah howdy. howdy howdy pat did a, i think that's a is that a new new guy for you AR? for me yeah yeah Appreciate yeah, you good. dropping in, man. Thanks. Good to see you, Pat. Uh, got some more here in another bunch of them I've got prepped. These are ready for powder and bullets right here. And I also use the uh, thing I got from Jamie, which is the case prep uh, sheet. Those are handy. Oh, yeah. You ain't kidding. They keep you. Then uh, I got all these I got to do. These are ready for powder and bullets and, and primed. So I'm, I have a few hundred here. Uh, <clears throat> well, let's see. hundred. A little over a hundred here, ready to go soon. Yep. Make sure it's not, yeah, no primer on that. No primer. 
Yeah, so. I, I made a bunch of two to three during the week because I got a, we're going to go shooting with a couple of friends over the weekend. So I actually mm -hmm. made a bunch of uh, two to three up. So I run them through on my 650. Cause first time I've used my 650 in months and months. I'm using the 650 right now to throw powder because it's so good at throwing powder. And, uh, yeah, it's nice and consistent. Yeah. Yeah, it certainly is. And uh, I got the uh, on and off primer switch, too. So I'm able to... Uh, I wonder why my primer switch kept going on. I realized my rock, my shaft, when I put the powder hopper on the other day, was crooked and it was hitting it. And I realized I tightened that little, you know, the little prong that sticks out. It holds the, you know, the white wire. You're supposed to, they tell you to pull that out as far as you can because it may hit it. Well, it was hitting it. And I realized it, and I had tightened it up a, about a week ago, and I took it while ago, and I pushed it out with my thumb. Now it's okay. Yeah, that's one thing I haven't upgraded on my 650s is that um, primer cut off. I need to do. I need to get a couple of them. Oh, that's nice, boy. Those are really. It to me, it's way better having them. I mean, cause like right now, I got primers in there. I couldn't do this if I had th these primers. If I didn't have this on and off switch, yeah, I'd just be. I'd have to tear it down, take the primers out. I see, you got critter in there. Yeah, those magnets are handy, Walter. What is? Oh, yeah, critter uses. I use industrial magnet bar screwed to the bench. I've got a few a roommate here a while back gave me. He said, I can't get it off. One I broke. I can't even pull it off. One broken too. It's an earth magnet. He said. I forget what it's out of. Sometimes I use it to close my cabinet, my two doors on my uh, storage cabinet out of there. I got a little uh, kind of like file cabinet similar to uh, Elster's got, except it's just like a filing cabinet with one shelf in it. And I use it for uh, powder and dyes. So got it at a thrift store, I think like eight bucks or ten bucks. Be surprised what you can get at thrift stores to help you. I got a shelf up here I bought at the thrift store. Got that. Other chef over on the wall behind me has a thrift store, which I may tear that down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna repaint this room and uh, I'm gonna lower this bench to uh, it's 39 tall. I'm gonna lower it to 34 inches, and that's gonna be kind of a job. I, I dread that. Then I'm gonna turn around and take that cabinet off the wall, move the bar out, and I'm gonna bar bench and I'm gonna paint the entire probably. I'm thinking about blue, partial blue. And uh, first I was thinking of maroon, but I think blue, Dylan blue. Maybe, and the, or that or gray. I hadn't decided yet. Or, oh, okay. You never did get you an avatar, did you, Mike? I thought I'd put it on there, but it's not up there. I just, huh. I'm just eating some tacos, so oh, I I'm just turning the camera off while I'm having dinner. No problem. As a part in the part in a bunker, just said, really like your videos, sir. Still enjoying them. Thank you. What was I watching right. your videos the other day? I was watching one of yours. Uh, I don't think what, which one it was. Hmm. Can't remember now. Pat in the bunker says, really like the videos, sir. Still enjoying them. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you for being here. He may be a follower of some of the other guys, but I sure appreciate you being here. Walter says something about the Gen X. Critter says dog tore my magnet screen, so I retasked the magnets. Got you, Critter. MCK, what did you hear about the Gen X plant? Oh, yeah, it's that primer plant. Let's see. You can pull those. Yeah, from old microwaves. He pulled them from something. It may have been a microwave. He was a kind of a tinker. He uh, repaired appliances. You need a firearm reloading room. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to repaint this. Like I say, I'm going to redo it. Now, over there with that shelf, I mean, the cabinet is now. I'm thinking about taking the uh, first probably three foot at least upper, and I'm going to make it into, uh, you know, plywood size crap. Get some uh, maybe probably going to be the uh, pine, pine uh, plywood. I like cabinet grade, but I can't, I can't afford cabinet grade for this. And I'm going to put a bunch of shelves all across the entire wall up there at the top. Jenny says Dylan blue equals old Ford blue. Yeah, it does look similar. 
That one's a that one's a good blue. That's for sure. <laughs> Mark Thomas um, is saying happy. What's that? Cinco de Mayo on your tacos, Mark. Yep, they're pretty good. Nice and spicy. Is it Cinco de Mayo today? Yeah, it is. Oh wow. Well, I remember my I, I remember my Cinco de Mayo weekend all the way back to 1990 in a condo. <laughs> well, I had a blast. I even got some of the things, you know, the little Cinco de Mayo things they put on the wall in a in a bar. A uh, bartender gave them to me, and I went and put them on my apartment wall near my bar. I had a wet bar. Uh, Ram four by four saying, "Mark man, any update thoughts on that new Lee press? Now you had a chance to use it a bit more. Yeah, it's um." It's smoothed out a little bit now. I've I've oiled it and greased it up a little bit, and a couple of guys put a comment on saying about putting like a, a piece of rubber or a piece of leather under the the bar that rotates it to stop it clunking on the press. <laughs> so I need to do that. But yeah, it's um, I made probably four or five hundred rounds of nine mil on it, and it's it's okay. It's um. I quite enjoy using it. It was fun to use. So, yeah, it's. Uh, I'm going to hang on to it, and I am going to use it. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, It's not too bad. It's not too bad, Ron. I like it because you can buy those cheap turret heads. That's they're what, they're about 12 or 15 bucks, and they for a turret head for it. Mm -hmm. Here's something good Walter's got. Hey, Jenny, 1911, spoiler alert. Springfield 9mm followed me home today. It also has the same designation as a famous female reloader. <laughs> See my video. But that must be a Hellcat. <laughs> my video is about. Well, I had a picture of mine on here on the thing. My, mine's a Springfield stainless steel, but it's nine millimeter, nineteen eleven, and I like it because it's it's accurate. My video is about to drop on mine. It's almost finished. That's bending. Check his video out. Video out soon, guys. The critter says, "Drown your mayo in the sink today." <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, he's got a question for me. Hasbro, my legs are made out of uh, four by fours, and uh, they've held up, and they have not warped or shrunk being in the house. And, uh, I got two on both ends. It's a, I think, eight foot. Uh, one side's attached to a wall, one side's not, and I got one in the center. And I've tried removing the one in the center, and it makes my bench shaky. So I got one dead center with the. Uh, not lag boats, but uh, holes drilled all the way through countersunk. Big old nut and boat and washer, and it, it's it's steady as a rock. Can't beat four by fours. Now, granted, you can take two. I could have took the uh, two two by fours and did it. And actually, I probably should have. Let's see. Oh, my goodness, sorry. Hot enchilada. I wish I had an enchilada. I'm getting hungry every time I get on here. When I used to go in Georgia, they talk about food and I'd get hungry. Talk about grits, red eye gravy, some of that southern food. Bending Ballistics just said, Mark, take brass shavings on the ram. It helped mine out a lot. Made the tolerance stay. What do you mean by the what do you mean by that, Bending? Don't 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 get what you say in there. Take brass shavings on the ram. Thanks for dropping by, uh, DJ. Play nice. Check him out, guys. He's over on the other side of our streaming. I jump in there and say hello to him from time to time. Sometimes I don't get a notification on these guys or on any of you at times. Night all night. Uh, he's headed to work. Have a good night, uh, PA Reloader. Thomas, let me get down there where you're at here. I'm a little far, further behind here. Jenny, 1911. Let's see. Walter Bunning, do you mean Rosie the famous? Oh, you know about Rosie from Hornady. She's my favorite. <laughs> she, they took her off. and you, uh, I think they probably got letters about it. But I remember Rosie. You all remember that show? You ever watched that, Mike? Rosie the Reloader. Had, had a no, nice shop. I have uh, Horn, Horn, never seen it years ago. Hornady um, got a girl with an accent, little, I think, little redhead. And uh, well, I shouldn't say it, but put her in hot, short shorts and tight top. 
Horny did that now, and they, it was a good show though, well produced. But they apparently got some slack or something. Ended up going uh, PC political correct, and they got her off and did away with it. So uh, I know what you. Uh, it's amazing, you know that, Jenny. But, that's that's that was okay years ago, but that's all. It's not. Oh, it's not good anymore. Yeah, and even then, it wasn't good then. After a while, apparently, they pulled her pulled her down. And I stopped it, but she had a top-notch show. I mean, good, good setup, good equipment. You know, telling people, teaching people how to reload. Uh, the thing James. is, they could have done it. She could have been in a pair of jeans and a long sleeve <laughs> shirt, and it would have been, it would have been fine. But because they're trying yeah. to take advantage of the lady, it's, it's, it's not mm -hmm. fine anymore. Those days are gone. You just gotta be. Yeah. James says I have a yearning for that 1911 Ronin. I'm, I mean, I think Max got that, don't you, Mike? No, I've got one on order. Yep. I got the 1911 Ronan in 10 mil on order. I just waited mm. for it to come in. I'd like to have that. Walter says, full disclosure, after I get a couple hundred rounds through it. Listen to this, Jenny. Air guns, I thought that. Oh, okay, I changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> you are now. Besides that, they took her down. I only I can only watch so many of her shows over and over. So. Uh, I hadn't watched that show in a long time, though. Seriously, that last show Jenny did was really good. I think she had was it Clover Tech? Was it Clover Clover Tech? Clover Tech. Yeah. That was a really good stream. That was I really enjoyed that. A lot of a lot of good information. You did good mm -hmm. there, Jenny. Critter, I, I, Critter says, I plan to be debt-free by next summer. Trailer and UTV paid off. Good for you, Critter. I know he's kind of on fixed income like a lot of us. I'm retired, so I kind of know what you're talking about. I'm trying to, i got a few things i got to pay off. I did pay off, I am almost paid off my tools I bought over the holidays. I think I owe like 300 left on it, which is $600 originally. So I paid half of it off. Uh, well, let's see what Bending's saying here. We're... The RAM on the Lee Press get binded up on that down stroke. I took brass shavings and put it on my RAM to cut down the brick. Ooh, brass shavings. I use, uh, you can use either, uh, I, I do motor oil on the uh, 650 because that's what they say to use. Uh, Dylan does. I use, uh, you can, on the presses, I use either Vaseline or uh, red, uh, Tacky Red. Red tacky, whatever they call it. And it takes uh, a little bit of Vaseline. It takes every bit of the slop out of the ram. If you got just a little bit, per se, you put a little around it and go up and down, go on the bottom, do it. It's, it's fine. You, you won't even move that ram. Jenny says, thank you, AR. Jenny didn't like a Ronin. Uh, okay, I don't know what that means, Walter. I'd like to have a 10 millimeter, though. Critter says, I kind of like the Sig Sauer. I'm not a Sig guy. They do are producing some stuff, I know. I'm just, I don't know why is I don't lean to the Sigs. Of course, I don't lean to the Glocks either. But uh, I'm more of a M&P. And, uh, and then other guns are, you know, real metal. But I do love the M&P series because had I've had every generation there is on it. Hasbro. I've got a Springfield Custom Target for ASP. I really want the 9. Well, mine's a, uh, is the range officer. It uh, says it's like one time was the entry-level competition gun. I think then they discontinued it, but they still got a gun that looks just like it, which is go figure. But supposedly I looked at mine here the other week and they said discontinued. Hey, maybe it'll go up in value. Mine shoots good. I like it, man. It's smooth as butter. The only thing I question when I got it, the ramp on it, because of the way the 40, you know, the 1911's made, the ramp is real long. I mean, the bullet has to ride a long way up it, you know. And I, that's just, huh. But I've never had a jam in that 1911. It just rolls. And it's, they, I, I, one day I went up to my daughter's here, I think two or three two Thanksgivings ago and I let my granddaughter shoot it. She never even shot a handgun, at least not a 1911. And she actually hit the target most of the time. And I told her, I said, that's, you got a good gun there. I, I bet if I put a polymer in her hand, she'd have missed it. Not used to polymer. Got to get used to them. 
I see. Jenny says, nope, I've had the three Ronin EMP and traded it because I didn't like it. Okay. Yeah, that's right. I heard you mention that EMP in one of your shows. Not shows, but the uh, videos. I've never thought about getting a small version of a 1911. That would be probably a good little carry gun, though. One of the commanders or something. Yeah, I'm going to get me that uh I'm going to get me that turret too, uh, Mac. In Sorry, just getting a glass of water. Mm-hmm. What's, yeah. what's, did just using the press smooth it out or did you kind of oil it or lube up the contacts on it? What did you do? Oh. I lubed up all the, the actual shaft down the middle where the, mm-hmm. that turns the head. So I lubricated all that. And then I've lubricated all the joints all the way down the, down where you pull on the the arm, and I put some oil and a little bit of light grease where the the turret head turns and the detent ball and everything is. So I've, um, but I think the more I've used it, it has sort of loosened up a little bit. It's not quite so notchy. Hang on, guys. I'll have to try that uh, bending ballistics, put a little bit of uh, brass shavings on it to see if it'll tighten up the uh, tighten up the tolerances. But <clears throat> until I go out and shoot them, I won't know how good or bad they are. But they seem to be pretty good, pretty pretty consistent. Mm-hmm. Hang on, guys. We're going to see if we can get Echo on here, too. Join us for a little bit here. I can see Harold Farmer's just jumped on you. Yeah. Napa White Grease. I never thought of that. But I, I guarantee you Vaseline, though, or uh, Red and Tacky, it fills the voids on a, pr- of a press on the ramp. Boy, like you wouldn't believe. They don't take much. I'd usually put just a little on my fingertip and run it around the ramp. And uh, what it is, I, I have a little, oh, God, who knows how many, a thousandth of an inch play on my T7. I mean, you you have to really, you know, move it to, to know it. And once I put that Vaseline on it, boom. boom. <laughs> Let's see. Grease, but brass works. I guess I could buy grease. I don't. I wouldn't use brass. I, matter of fact, I won't even uh, deprime on my T7. I keep my T7 clean. I'll deprime on my uh, uh, Forester, and why I do Forester don't get the Rams uh, dirty. And I don't deprime on my uh, big boss either. Now I will deprime, you know, on the uh, six fifty. You know, sometimes when I size, but no, pending. But usually I end up. Most time I end up sizing on my T seven, and I, then I go to my six fifty and load it all up and do it. So I don't usually yeah. do that. I do all mine on. I got a, one of those Hornady's and lock and load single stage presses. I bought one of those, and that's what I do all my. Um, bullet pulling on and depriming and everything. So that's my dirty, that's my dirty, that's my dirty press. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't like that primer stuff getting down my, on my uh, ram and shaft. And I agree. Brass is softer than steel, but uh, you got to realize these, these rams are polished too. Uh, well, it just says but, the ram on the lead turret isn't loose. It's just fine. Mm-hmm. As it with proper lube again, I don't use mine for precision work. That's that's exactly right. It's just for throwing some rounds together, just so you can get a bunch of rounds and take them with you. I, I wouldn't use it for anything precision. Well, I've got my zero press now that I can do all my precision stuff on. That's one nice press. Walter says, I'm with you, or I don't deprime on my main presses. Yeah, I just don't like doing that at all. Did you see that video Walter put up today? Did you mm-hmm. see that AI? With his new that press he got. That old press he's going to do yes. up on his 10 to it. I like that 1022. That is pretty sweet for that. That 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 is a nice gun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. He, he can that. send me that anytime he wants to. <laughs> I will take that off his hands. Not a problem. Bicentennial rifle. 200 years old rifle. Yeah. Yeah. I got a bunch of a quarters. My, my daughter was born on Bicentennial. She's a Bicentennial baby. Bidding says, I deprime and load all my precision ammo on a progressive press. Okay. 
Yeah, I don't see that's something different. I don't do precision on progressive. I do it on a Forester single stage or a T7, typically. And I kind of keep the the uh, now. I, um, basically, I do two two three on the Dylan for bang bang or shtf whatever and i'm gonna get a pretty soon i gotta get a nine millimeter conversion in case i need to load some fast but i typically won't do if i do precision it's usually on a, more like a single stage or a turret typically but that's just me nothing wrong with what you do when we did that uh, live stream <clears throat> excuse me with that zero press remember how much different there was the tolerances when we were seating the bullet compared to the t7 they were there was three mm -hmm. Three to four thousand better tolerances on the zero press. That surprised me. I, I thought the T7 usually. Mm -hmm. I've had on my T7. I typically get one thou run out on two two three. And uh, boy, that, that zero shows how precise that zero is. Yeah, we were using it on three oh eight, so it was a bit different. But oh, okay. there was so yeah. much tighter tolerances on it. Much mm -hmm. much tighter. I tell you what I'll do. When I get time, guys. I got uh, the brass, new brass. I'll load a few three oh eights and do, we'll do a thing on see what it show, what it shows up on my T seven just to see, just to get an idea what my run out is. Alaska one Andy's just jumped on. How are you doing, Andy? Hey, Alaska one Andy, good to see you. Walter Bunning, I bought that new T forty six years ago. Seven, yeah, seventy six was a bison. When I seen the two hundred on, I figured it was a bicentennial rifle. I think I'm right, aren't I? Walter, I get notices here on my Microsoft Edge. Reloader just posted one on Marlin. I hate those notifications because they get right in the way here. Critter wants a new sugar mama so she can spend <laughs> money on me and then leave. Good plan, Critter. That, that's pretty good. I like that. I thought he was already flirting with Jenny. He <laughs> 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 wants a sugar mama. <laughs> Uh, just picking on Critter Night. That's right. Uh, I love Critter's humor. You want to come on, Critter? Low balling outdoors here. Is that here stopping? Uh, low balling. Good to see you, low balling. You want you, you want a link, brother? <clears throat> You've never come on here and talked to us since we've had that interview uh, Echo did with you. I haven't heard from Echo. He's either asleep or don't want to. Hmm, who knows? Yeah, Walter says, yes, it's a bicentenary model. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I'd like to have that. <laughs> oh, boy. We speak a critter, and then we all go off the, the rails, don't we? Uh, we just joke a little bit, though. We're not going to get that bar off the rail, that much off the rails. Of course, critter won't say sugar mama, but I have guns, so I'm I'm poor. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. I used to have a bunch of guns. Quite a few. Nowhere near, not some of you, but now I've sold them all off. Critter. Well, let's see what Critter. Let's see what Mark Thomas says. Critter, I'll send you my old lady, but <laughs> I like you. <laughs> <laughs> you. You don't want to do him that way, do you, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Like I say, guys, sometimes, hey, we have fun just talking to each other, you know? I, and I was going to do like maybe 30 minutes of a reloading show. How long did I make it? 20 minutes before, before I end up saying, hey, come on. Somebody come on the panel here and talk. talk. Let's talk. Got Jamie here. You want to link, Jamie? It's, well, getting kind of late. Actually, I, I was going to text you, Jamie, and ask you earlier for the link. I must have forgot. If you want one I now, do. I'll send it, though. How you doing, Jamie? And Thor's axe has jumped on you as well. Not so, Jamie says. Guns are a great investment. You ain't kidding. They go up in price, even used. They sure do. They don't seem to never depreciate. Reloader 762's jumped on. Oh, hey, Reloader. <clears throat> Good to see you. Shoot, let's see, Hasbro says, shoot it with my Springfield 1911 and 45 in a Ruger. Mark three with a bunch of upgrades. That's another thing I got to get. I was watching one of Chris's uh, videos today that uh, I'd like to get that little Ruger 22 he's got and put me a little uh, uh, red dot on it. That would be a fun gun, plus affordable. I would AR, but it's my bedtime. 
Yeah, I apologize. I should have asked you around nine. Uh, uh, next next time, I'll shoot you one if you want it, or I'll shoot you one anyway. And uh, I was kind of waiting, guys. I was going to do maybe thirty-five to forty-five minute thing, but uh, hey, I did two bullets. I hope you, you all got something out of it. It just shows that hey, the Forester is easy press to set up. It's not bad at all. I've never regretted it. At times, I've thought about it. I, said, oh, I paid a lot of money for that thing, three hundred fifty <clears throat> bucks. I don't even know what it is now. And, uh, but, uh, I've loaded 308 on it and uh, 223. And I, I've got too many presses. I've got only got four. I don't know how many you got, Mac, <laughs> compared uh, to me. You got a ton load, of it, I bet, compared to me. I'm at nine at the moment. How many? Nine presses. Nine? I got four, and sometimes I go, wow. But then I want one more, and that's the Lee turret. That'll be five. And uh, I want that doggone RL 1100 don't, to process brass, even though I know I won't load on it, you know, all stages. But I would love to have it for processing. Definitely. You, you swage on the 10, uh, 1050? Yeah, it's got a swaging thing on it. D does it work well, you think? Um, It's okay. It's okay. Because okay. it's cause what – cause the, the way the Dillons do it, they, they they obviously they push that swaging rod into the primer pocket, and it's it's moving brass, isn't it? I much prefer that the RCBS where I cut the brass away. Mm -hmm. But if I'm just um, low, if I'm just processing a load of two, two, three, or five, five, six, I'll just throw it in there and let it do it. I have upgraded that swage pin, which is um, on the ten fifty. That's your swaging pin. Mm -hmm. So I have upgraded this to, I think it's, is it family and friends or friends and family make a few reloading parts? I don't know if you've ever seen them. They do some upgrades for some things and they do the, mm -hmm. I think they sell the FW um, depriming dies as well. And they do a few upgrades and they do a nice upgrade of one of these. It lasts a lot longer than the Dillon one. The Dillon one seems to be a little bit soft on the top. Oh, wow. But I don't. I don't like. I don't, I don't like it. I I much prefer to to run them through and then cut them on the little mm -hmm. RCBS. You're always welcome too, Jamie. I always enjoy having you on the panel, man. Good See you, night, Jamie. Catch you later, brother. Let's see. I've got. Um, Three guns ready to come from a gun shop. We're just waiting for him to come out of quarantine. He took him in. He took a bunch of guns in from a lady who her husband had passed. So they're just, they've got another, got another two weeks in quarantine and then he can sell them. And I've got three of them put aside. Mm -hmm. I use this and so far, and it's my lineman and it's like eight bucks. It's the little, nothing but the little goofy reamer with a little knurled on it. That's all it is. That's all and it need. works every time. I mean, but it actually it removes it removes brass rather than yeah. push, trying to push it away. It's a much better idea. I hear some guys don't like it, but I've never it it, it it's never did anything wrong. It bevels. It don't go too deep. It uh, it works every friggin' time. I, I I would think that it eventually maybe wear out because it's not. I wouldn't think it's that good of steel, but uh, I'll see. I've been using it for a while now. I think Echo he sent me another one because I thought I lost it couldn't find it there for a while so i i, I got two and, uh, but it works you just zoom you don't take much and I, I don't do it high speed either i just turn it slow and it takes it right out i actually bought the rcbs version that walter and uh, high boy uses and from amazon and it would not even take the uh brass out of the primer it wouldn't even work did you have the right one yeah oh yeah yeah i That's suspect maybe one got off somebody returned it or they returned their used one who knows? And sent it back to uh, Amazon. I just sent it back to Amazon. Told me it wouldn't work. Jenny says she's off to dreamland. Great chat. Night, good night, Jenny. Jenny. Have a good one. Yeah, I do mine. I, I put a video up on my channel as well. And what I've got is I've got a vice set up. And then I put, I put my drill pointing upwards. And I clamp it just gently in the vice. I put a zip tie on the trigger. Just pull it so it's just turning nice and slow. And then I've got my RCBS cutting tool in it. And I just come over, hold the brass on the top, and just push it straight down onto the drill. 
and I can go through and do hundreds of them in one batch. Just got to wear mm -hmm. gloves because sometimes the brass turns in your hand and if you're not wearing gloves, you start getting blisters on the inside of your hands. Got so, Thor's um, axe with us. Good to see you, Thor. Yeah, I'll I, try that. I, I, also, I need to get that uh, uh, drill adapter for my uh, Ellie Wilson like you got too. My, yeah, that makes a big difference. It just makes it so much easier. Yeah, where's my shoulder out? <laughs> Yeah, go back and see if you can find the video of me um, cutting the crimp off, and it's uh, you can see how my setup works, and it works good for me. Reloader, Ram, glad you're in the force. Yeah. Anytime you want to come on, low balling, you're welcome. I know you're probably not used to panel. And it could be a little intimidating, but you're always welcome to come on here. I'm not going to run a long chat tonight. I was going to do a little more on the reloading, and maybe next week I'll do it a little bit longer. And uh, Hey, I got two rounds done. <laughs> not a lot, but I've been slowly. I got a lot of them ready, though, to go. Already, I just got to put the powder in and go. And... Uh, I'll be honest. <laughs> I got. I'm gonna let you all on a secret because we all make mistakes. Even on, even on, especially on a live stream. I actually stuck a bullet into one while ago and forgot to put the powder in it, guys. So I got to go whack it out with my whacker. So I'll admit it. I got distracted, but when I caught it, and I says, "Oh crap!" Yeah, so you got to be yeah, careful. That's, these. that's why I wouldn't do any. If I was running my it's, own live streams, I'd never load on a live stream because it's just. Got to be very careful, that's for sure. Yeah. Even when I'm in my loading room and I'm doing loading, I, I don't have any mm -hmm. music on. I haven't got a TV on. I mm -hmm. just, I'm just concentrating. I see so many people loading and they're talking to people and they're, they're listening to music or they've got a TV going. I just think mm -hmm. they're just asking for trouble. It's, it's a dangerous game and there's no point saying anything else. We are actually we're playing with little bombs mm -hmm. and it yeah. takes one little... Uh, error to turn that bullet from a safe bullet into something that's going to blow your hat blow your gun up blow your hand off and it's just it's just not worth it you just when you when you load in i tell everybody when they ask me just get in your zone nice and quiet and you're good to go because when my grandkids come up and they want to come out my loading room i won't do any loading at all i'll do brass prep but i won't do anything to do with loading when there's people around me i just don't do it it's just it's just not worth it I've got mine set up here to where I can catch it. All right, you know, during the stream, that's how I caught it. And I kind of typically put the powder in and then check it and then then do it. But that one got away from me. But as soon as I did, I said, oh, uh-oh, stick that thing aside. <laughs> but typically I got it set up. Not right now I don't, but I usually got it set up like uh, five. And I'll have each one and I got them turned upside down. And then as soon as I get powder, I set them in there and take it right away. As soon as I get the powder and I put the bullet, what it was, I set it down, got the talking. And you can't do that. No. So low balling that. outdoors is leaving us. Good night, guys. Good night. Night, low balling. Hasbro, I don't have your email, I don't think, do I? Email me uh, mm -hmm. at, uh, and I'll reply to you, argun1776 at gmail.com. We'll talk about it for a few minutes. We'll go about another 15, 20 minutes. Then, well, we're already, yeah, we're near the hour and a half point. So we'll go a little bit here longer. Send me an email and I'll send you the link. I've never had him on a, a, a panel. So that'll be good. Let's see again. <laughs> That's what I call it, a bullet whacker. Let's see again with a whacker. <laughs> oh, boy. Let's see. Hasbro. Let's see. That's. Not Hasbro. Thor's Act. Hasbro, I just use size lubricated bullets. Many of you have tried powder coated bullets with mixed results in bullseye shooting. For the most part, the people winning use size lubricated bullets. That's interesting. And also that powder coated, don't they smoke? Don't they get all smoke uh, back? I've heard a few com 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 competitors say they don't like that. I don't think it's the powder coating that's smoking. I just think it's the powder that smokes. Some powder smokes, doesn't it? It's just mm -hmm. I haven't noticed it any any more smoky with the mm -hmm. with the powder coating check, on. Let me check my email for Hasbro. Did you get my address, Hasbro? 
argun1776 at gmail.com. And I'll put you a link in there. There, there he is. Hang on. Let me get to... Here you go. Hang on. Let me <clears throat> copy it to my clipboard. Let's see. All right, here we go. On its way, Hasbro. I like that L.E. Wilson. I never, I've never regretted buying that one. That's one of those cry once, or buy once, cry once, or whatever you want to say it. Uh, cry once, buy once, buy once, cry once. Who knows? But it's been a good one. I call it a mini lathe. Oh, I need a glass. I need my water. It's hot back here in this room. My AC don't reach back here that well. Thor's axe, what's he got to say? And it has right the real confidence builder shooting 100 at 50, one handed at 50 yards. When you get the hang of what you're doing and, and hold the, the black. Hmm. He should have it in a minute. Usually, if I, well, I tell you what, hang on one, well. Hang on one second. You be my co-host, Mike. Yeah, you go. <laughs> I'll be right back. Just one I'll, second. Guys. I'll keep reading the, the comments as they pop up. My gun club doesn't like me shooting traditional lube. Do, do, Walter, doesn't the normal lube bullets, and do they tend to smoke a bit, or why don't they like using it? No, you're right there, Thor. It's just... The more you shoot, the more you refine your shooting, and the accurate, the more accuracy you will get. Well, what happened to Echo? Sometimes he goes to sleep, or... Do you find your powder-coated bullets smoke as well, Walter, or is it, or is it just, it's just your loop bullets? It was, years ago, Reloader. Hey, Hasbro. Good hey, to see you. No. How you doing? Doing good. Just getting back from traveling to Detroit, so I'm doing great. I'm out of Detroit. <laughs> oh, okay. Out of Detroit. I get you. Got you. Find my, where is my... Yeah, I, was, I just heard you talking about getting the drill adapter. Uh, I bought mine off some guy from eBay. It was maybe mm -hmm. 20 bucks. And I put this skill, little 90-degree screwdriver on it. It's real small, compact lasts forever on a charge and it turns slower and that seems to really help when you when you cut the brass to go a little slower than a, uh, than a regular drill does yes it does mm -hmm. but man it yeah, saves so much time upgrade. you can get in a rhythm with that thing with that drill and just fly through brass and it's so precise no you can't beat the lee can't I mean, lee ellie wilson ellie yeah. wilson is nice let me blow my yeah, I use there. a little Milwaukee. That's what I turn mine with, a little Milwaukee screw gun. I got Is the that same like one. A driver? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. A so it turns slower. Yeah, it's only a... And it's got a variable trigger on it as well, so you can, you can wind it down a little bit. You know what I paid for mine Black Friday for that? 69 bucks at Home Depot for the whole kit. <laughs> yeah, they're not Good expensive deal. if you catch them right in Home Depot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I yeah, need I've that adapter my, too, Hasbro. Go ahead. I've been using my L.E. Wilson for, oh, it's got to be close to 30 years now. It, it just is perfect and, and not worn it out. I did have to kind of clean surface rust off it once, but that's about it. Yeah, there's a little adapter that goes on the end of it, so you can run it yeah, on your okay. screen. Okay. That's the one. And when it's mounted in the in the tool, it just sits there and... Mm-hmm. 
Have Have you tried the titanium oxide coated bits? Because I got one, and it wouldn't cut for anything. It was terrible. Hmm. No, this is this is just the one that came with the tool from Ellie Wilson. I haven't upgraded that at all. I just yeah. Because I like I said, because you turn them slow and you don't overheat them or nothing, just nice and slow. I haven't had any issues with it. Yeah, I haven't did mine that. after probably after literally after 25 years, the steel one was getting a little dull. So I made the mistake of trying the titanium one and it just it just wasn't sharp. And if you hmm. if you sharpen it, you take the coating off. So Wow, you'd think that'd be better, wouldn't you, Hasbro? You would think. Mm -hmm. The one I got anyway wasn't. No, oh, the steel does good, but I definitely got to get that adapter. I got the same drill as Mac does there. I just got to get the adapter. I'm, I don't, you know, one or two I don't mind, but I got to do 20, 30, 40, 50 rounds. My arm starts getting tired cranking that yeah. thing. My little, uh, I don't know what the heck, it is a skill, lithium ion. Well, 90 degree screwdriver one is so lightweight, I just leave it <laughs> on it. It kind of hangs there. It's so light, it doesn't really hurt anything. But either, you know, it's just the whole deal. Keep it slower, and it it's, uh, works beautiful. Mm -hmm. I've got one of those um, Henderson trimmers on my, my next thing on my list I want to get. Actually, it was... The reloader dude years ago, he, he was in competition. He's the one that mentioned that. He said that his uh, powder coated tend to smoke a little too much. So I, that's where I got that from. Oh, yeah. I heard that comment a minute ago, too. I've never had it smoke, but you could smell it burning. And I'm mm -hmm. sure it's the backside of that bullet getting burned a little bit, the plastic burning. But I've never had them smoke. Gotcha. Hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Thorzak says, yeah, push yourself away, away from the target. That's something I need to practice more one hand, and actually the other hand. I'm, I'm right-handed, but I play sports left-handed, if I play sports at all. Let's see. One of those yeah, this, this, this thing is the what I want to get next. You see that Henderson... Brass trimmer. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That I've looks seen great. that. 779 bucks. Yeah, it's about 300 if you buy it without the motor or 400 without the motor. And then if you buy it complete with the motor, then it's they're like, but they, they're, they're eight months out. They're giving you a lead time of eight, eight, ten months before you can get one. Wow. Critter shoots the tree behind his house. One of these days, that tree's going to die of lead poisoning. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh. Walter says his cast bullets don't smoke or smell unless he uses Trail Boss, which stinks no matter <laughs> how you lube it. Yes, that's interesting, Walter, because I actually got that. You know who t the reloader dude is? He's the one that mentioned that years ago. Yeah, it's kind of funny you think about that. On 45 ACP, I don't think I smell the plastic either, but I'm shooting bullseye or unique. But on 9 millimeter, I do, especially when I use tight group. You can smell it burn. Hmm. Isn't tight enough. group a much faster burning powder, though, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's real fast. Strike is real sensitive on getting too much. You can go over pressure pretty quick with tight group. Probably that's why it's burning the bullet a bit because it's, it's heating up so much. It's probably burning the back of the bullet a bit. Right. Peter has has no trees. I should recover some of those and see if I could see it burn. Mm. Sorry, Matt. <laughs> no, you're good. And my daughter, she's on 11 acres of land. I, I, I probably could buy that land. But I would have to get enough cash out of this house, which I got equity in it, but I don't think I got that much. I probably could buy that land. The only reason I held back, they have uh, internet there, and it's AT&T, and the, the, all the copper wire, they will not even run it, even though the copper wire is bad. So she has a really very bad internet connection. And they, the, the repairmen have told her, repairmen, <laughs> there's nothing we can do, and AT&T will not upgrade your wiring. It's not worth it out here in a r rural area for you. So if I move out there, I could do YouTube videos, have a t my own target range, 
but I couldn't do a video for YouTube. Couldn't get that's, it uploaded. That's there's the same problem I have here. All I can get is AT and T DSL, and mm -hmm. we're not too far from you know high speed internet. But they won't go a quarter mile down the road to bring it to where we are. Oh. So I'm waiting on Starlink. I'm gonna be an Elon Musk fanboy. I'm afraid. Yeah, I've seen that on YouTube. Hey, Big Al. Good to see you. I'm looking at Seven Point Acres in New Mexico. Not sure why I want a small place in Hell's Kitchen, but I do. And I'd love to have, you know, five, heck, I'd like to have five acres. But on this land, got a creek. back. At, it's got a barn on it that was built in the 1800s. And the creek was actually uh, part of a historical picture with Indians. They actually got Indians in the creek on this land I can buy, where the Indians were sitting there watering their horses back in the eight, uh, late 1800s. Yeah, I'd love to be able to buy some land and be able to shoot from my back back porch. That would be so cool. Oh yeah, you ain't kidding. I can't hear. I'm in. A, I got a lot of woods back here, but it's private land. And then I got neighborhood here. Even though I'm kind of I'm out of the city, but still. And, I, and it, a lot of this area is rural, but not my neighborhood, unfortunately. What James says here. I made a robot. Uh, who you been, Hasbro? Where what? Do you stream with uh, other guys on YouTube sometime or in their chat? I really haven't, man. I've just been doing videos and kind of getting on the chat side of other people's streams. But Echo okay. was talking. He wants me on his. Uh, I don't know if I'll do it tomorrow night or not. We'll see. Oh, okay. But I really haven't. I just really haven't done it. No reason. Echo. I'll, t I'll talk to him. Yeah. Hmm. If I do that, I'll hook up my webcam and stuff. I just, like I said, I just got home. I don't have time to do anything. If he can't or he, he he don't get you on, we'll put you on just special guest. I don't do interviews. I'll just say, hey, tell us your story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, kind of a casual chat. I'll go up and put up something up in my shop area, too, so I can do other stuff if you want. Mm -hmm. how, how long have you been following me here on this? Uh, I don't know. Six months, maybe. Okay. Lurking. Well, you know, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I appreciate you, you know, checking me out and sticking with me. That's funny because I sort of started chatting with Echo and then I, you know, sort of started listening and following some of your stuff. So mm -hmm. it's a pretty good synergy between you guys. Yeah, we sometimes, sometimes we've got a little too carried away. I've tried to dial some of that back uh, especially with the jokes <laughs> uh, it just uh, there i don't kind of want to go at times but yeah we have a good time he's a good yeah. guy mm -hmm. and if yeah, we really wanted to we, we could act like crazy wild and crazy guys on here if we wanted to but I, I'm, I'm trying to get away from that you know t talk uh reloading and stuff like that avoid yeah, there's, there's more and more ladies coming on and i think there's some mm -hmm kids beginning to watch these channels so we just got to be a bit yeah. more careful what we say and what we do on here because we're going to be more respectful of people yes yeah understood yeah I'm, I'm becoming more aware of that back when i started streaming i didn't have any ladies on well i had vanessa she would come on but she didn't care i don't think how we talked <laughs> but uh, some do and i don't want to lose people yeah. Thing is, it's not it's not that they they mind or anything. It's just the fact that it's 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 respect, isn't it? It's just mm -hmm. you wouldn't talk like that in a if you went out to a bar and there was ladies around you or a restaurant yeah. and you're sitting on a table, with ladies. You wouldn't speak like that. So it 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 should be the same on here. Even though there's no ladies on the panel, they're out in the chat yeah. and we should respect them. And mm -hmm. if yeah, they come be... on and they, if they come on and they want to talk like that, I haven't got a problem with it. But it's different <laughs> for us. It's just. It's, it's just being respectful for people. I don't even want them coming on talking like that, actually. And sometimes I, I get carried away, especially in the daytime. But I, I, there's times I've said things I didn't want to say. And I've totally started becoming more aware that, that there's parents out there got kids and they're probably watching Reloading. And I don't want to sit there and some eight-year-old kid hear me, you know, talking locker room talk. So <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to get away from that. So. And it's, it's this thing that some people go on late at night, but it's, it doesn't really mm -hmm. matter because they're still still out there, so these kids can watch it the following day at two o'clock in the afternoon. So even mm -hmm. though they think they're on they they past that nine o'clock threshold, 
those videos are out there for good and it's just they can still jump on and watch them at a later date so hmm. you don't get letting okay yeah i was looking at thor's comments that's a lot of rounds without cleaning it's like i could never mm -hmm. do that with bullseye my gun would stop functioning <laughs> 1500 rounds yeah that's strange. Leading is a common thing to happen, though. Lead bullets. But, let's see. Walter says, I don't want eight-year-olds to even see me. <laughs> yeah, I know. I got you, Walter. <laughs> they think we're old as mud, don't they? <laughs> when they see us. Well, it's 838. Well, I appreciate you coming on, Hasbro. Pleasure so meeting you and actually speaking to you. So. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, maybe one, one day we'll uh, we'll do my other hobby, talk about it too, and that's building from scratch flintlocks and engraving them and all that stuff. That's kind of a different world. Oh wow, I like. It. Sounds good though. That like sounds that. interesting. Mm -hmm. I had a chance years ago to uh, do an apprenticeship with the Connor Prairie. It's a pioneer farm north of Indianapolis with a master gunsmith there and engraving and I sort of just got into that and it gets you away because it, it just you can't focus on anything else you know mm -hmm. yeah you're going back to echo me and echo have a good rapport we i don't know why it's just we're me and him talk easy <laughs> we just do i can almost predict what he'll say sometimes <laughs> and uh Hey, guys, we appreciate you showing up tonight. Appreciate having you on, Hasbro. Great having oh, thank you on. You. Thanks for the invite. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can come on anytime, man. And next time you're on, I'll send you a link. And uh, more people on the panel sometimes, the better. <coughs> I, I typically try to keep maybe four on the panel. Mm -hmm. No more. Well, I have went five and six. But you, you get a large panel, it gets a lot harder to talk. So it's like the Brady Bunch. Mm -hmm. looks like uh what's that show uh what was that show years ago uh hollywood squares oh yeah that's what remember I that thinking. yeah hey yeah, that's <laughs> so so's here hey i'm here you know, hey. <laughs> that's a date stamp is what that is <laughs> mm -hmm. i don't i don't think they don't even do hollywood squares anymore it's an old show too oh i appreciate this see let me run down here and call these guys off most of you all I've called out. Some was only going to call out a few that jumped in short uh, recently. I appreciate you, Hasbro, coming here. Matt, man, thanks for being on the panel, guys. It was a pleasure having you. Got Thor Zax here, Walter Bunning, Tread. Uh, let's see here. Ram 4x4, Big Owl jumped in, Critter, James Pollard, Buzz Fort, Walter Bunning. Uh, who else here? Doors that low balling outdoors was with us. Chris from the 740 was in earlier. Jenny 1911, Jenny J 1911, Hasbro here. Low balling reloader 762 was with us. JH586 was with us. Jamie, Uncle John, round four by four. Good to see you guys. Reloader 762. Who else here? Mark Thomas, Alaska One Andy was with us critter i've called bending ballistics was with us H harold farmer good to see you harold actually he was in here at 10 30 something i didn't even see you jump on got to talking uh, let's see good, uh, appreciate you dropping by harold who else here uh, dj play nice jumped in here thanks for coming by dj uncle john was here Mark Thomas. Pat in the bunker was here. That's somebody new. Appreciate them coming by. Let's see. That's bro. I think I about got it. Good night, Mark. Mark Thomas is on his way out. Right. See you, man. Mark, have a good one. Who else? Tread. Oh, I said Tread. Yeah. Let's see. That's bro. MCK was with us. Of course, Mac here. Idaho Rogers jumped in for a while. Of course, he ain't been on in a while. 920. Let's see. MCK. Where's that? Rollis Carvelis. Hey, Rollis. Good to see you. He's probably not with us either. He was way back there. 917. So, appreciate him dropping by. 
Christmas 740, Reloader 762. I called Jerry Bear Tactical, and that's it. Andy 79 Z28. It was his bedtime. I hate that. The, the show, it depends on what happens. I might try to occasionally go at 830 if it's possible and maybe try to get Andy on here too. I, I hate it. Some of the, some of the guys, you guys have a hard time getting on here. But uh, I can just see, I'm um, just jumping quickly. Thor, Thorax saying about um, taking guns apart, ruins his tolerances, shoot them till they quit. Cleaning your guns all the time is a bad habit. I think that could be a good topic to talk about on one of your streams is cleaning and stripping guns down. Oh, got G Webs yeah. here. Got Echo here. I just texted you, man. Tried to get you on here. Hasbro says you gonna do an interview. We're gonna do an interview with Hasbro. He says we got a good uh what how did you describe it? Hasbro? <laughs> uh, good rapport. Good rapport between us. Yeah, me and him can talk. If, if I forget to say something, he'll say it. If he forgets, I'll say something. <laughs> so, and I, love, I like talking to Mac. Mac's a good uh, guest, too, always. Gun websites just jumped on you. He said mm -hmm. he got here at the end. Good to have yeah, you. Yeah, I knew he was on here watching. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, thanks for being on. You want to go ahead and any plugs or anything you want to say, Mac, before we, before we get out of here? Oh, I just like, I really appreciate you getting me on here. I enjoy coming on here and talking, reading the site, site chat was great again tonight. There's some good uh, good discussions going on there. Um, nice to speak to you, Hasbro. I haven't spoken to you before. It's good talking Thank to you. you. And um, yeah, like I said, I'm going to go and camping this weekend, so we're not going to be doing a lot of shooting. We are going to go out one day and do a little bit, try and do some fishing, try and catch some stripy bass in the night. And um, no, that's about it. You got anything you want to plug or or sign off? You want to sign off, Hasbro? Well, yeah, I've got. It's just I've been traveling so much and, and dealing with a uh, really failing health mother. I haven't got a lot of my videos finished, but I've been uh, working on a 1942, 1903 Springfield. Got it all done, so I get back to it. And then six millimeter arc. A lot of people have that, but the one I just put together and I haven't even fired around through. It's a 300 hammer. So I'm really looking forward to developing rounds and testing that rifle out. That should be a lot of fun. That's upcoming stuff for me. Thank Sounds you. good. See you, Walter. Good to see you. Hey, guys, we appreciate you being here. Uh, God bless, and see you on the flip side, and have a good one. Not at all. Good night, right. guys. We'll be on the back side, Hasbro. Then we'll sign off if you want to hang right. around a minute. Okay. Night, guys.